You are watching With a Cup of Tea, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings. Now, here's our show. Welcome from This House of Books. We have with us today Gwen Florio, who will be talking about her latest book, Best Laid Plans. Uh, just before this last election, Gwen retired from a decades-long career as a journalist. Now, in her career, she uh, has a lot of accomplishments. She's reported some major stories from both abroad um, and domestically. And her journalism has been nominated three, three times for a Pulitzer Prize. Her first novel, Montana, introduces her character, a journalist named Lola Wicks, who features in a series of five novels. Uh, Montana came out in 2013. He won the High Plains Book Award as well as the Pinkley Prize for crime fiction. Since then, a number of her books have been translated into Italian, German, and Czech. Her most current book is Best Laid Plans, and it features a new heroine, Nora Best. Maybe, Gwen, you could just uh, start by telling us a little bit about yourself and then uh, uh, tell us about your book. Well, as you noted, I recently left the Missoulian after many, many years, many, many years in journalism. And the great thing about that is now I have more time to focus uh, mostly on my fiction, which is such a luxury. Uh, I spent a lot of years getting up very early in the morning and in the before times going to a coffee shop to write and then to work. Uh, there is a coffee shop providentially right across the street from the Missoulian. Uh, but now I can sleep to a decent hour and still get up and uh, get my writing done in the morning. So that's been the biggest development in my writing life recently. Uh, as you noted, my first series, the five Lola Wicks books featured a journalist. And I think a lot of novelists do that. They sort of cling to what they know and boy, for sure, that's why I did it. But it's been fun with this new series to move away from that. Uh, there are always journalists in my book, not always in the most um, flattering terms. Uh, but um, again, this protagonist is not a journalist. And I recently, um, after I left the paper, signed uh, a contract with Crooked Lane Books for a, a new series. It's a two book contract. The Lola Wick stuff, I, it's, some of it's so intense. I mean, I, I just said I got to go. Back. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. well, you know, the whole publishing thing, um, you know, it was really a gut punch when Midnight Inc. closed. Mm. And then I can't get back the rights to the first two books, books in the series. So, oh. you know, I'm really kind of screwed in that regard. So I can't put the whole series out again. Um, and so I spent a little while feeling sorry for myself. And then it's like, okay, pull up the big girl panties and let's move on. Yeah. Um, and, and in a way it forced me out of my comfort zone. So I think that was good. That's always good. Is Lola just on vacation now or is she in, in retirement? I think unless I get the rights to those first two books back, I think she's done. And I really miss her. I mean, she was such a, a jerk in a lot of ways. <laughs> um, but she was really fun to write. You uh -huh. know, she's just so cantankerous. And I, I always tell people Lola was my id. Um, <laughs> she would say the things I would never say, but uh, she just went right out there. So. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about Nora then. So Nora is a 50 year old woman who um, has gotten a book contract. I did throw that little bit in there. That's a little bit of what I know, except she got a really big book contract that um, the plan was that she and her husband would spend a year traveling around the country in an Airstream trailer. And they would write this sort of lovely sort of travelogue, midlife, you know, marriage, yay. Except that on the eve of their departure, she discovers him fooling around with her best friend. So she takes off on her own. You know, her whole plan has gone kaput. And she ends up in a remote campground in northern Wyoming, where she thinks she's going to, you know, chill out, kind of figure out what to do with her life. Um, 
And of course, things do not go as planned. So uh, Nora Best, is is she going to be part of a series now? Uh, yeah, there's a sequel coming out. I think it is scheduled uh, for late next year. I'm not quite sure of the pub date on that. I just turned in the manuscript and just turned in the final edits on that. Tell us, who, what, what audience did you have in mind for this book? Who do you think would particularly like the book? You know, I made her a little bit older for the simple reason that um, at that age, a lot of women, they, they suddenly find themselves with some unexpected freedoms. You know, their kids are grown or almost grown. They can sort of redefine themselves. And Nora is forced to redefine herself in a really unpleasant way. Mm -hmm. But I think it will appeal to people who find themselves in that position. The other people, I mean, I wrote the book very selfishly. I would love an Airstream trailer. Uh, I can't afford one, will never be able to afford one. But I had this idea that there had to be an Airstream in the book and then I had to write a plot around it. <laughs> um, so I think there's sort of that escapism that goes with it. And then because she finds herself uh, in the mountains of Wyoming, She's done a lot of hiking, but she's not really very well versed in the outdoors. And when I was a kid, I was a huge fan of um, adventure books, um, books like Gary Paulson's Hatchet that came out when I was an adult, but still people who are thrown into the wilderness and they have to learn some skills and she too learns some skills. And, and just that sense of acquiring both competence and confidence, I think will appeal to people, I hope male and female. Oh, wow. Okay. I'm, I'm liking the sound of it. <laughs> so, and again, I'm thinking this may draw on some of your experience, uh, you know, where you were raised and uh, the circumstances. Uh. Yeah, I grew up on a wildlife refuge. So the out of doors yeah. has always been really, really important to me. I mean, I spent as much of my childhood as possible playing in the woods uh, mostly by myself because we didn't have any neighbors. We were far from everything. And it was just a fabulous way to grow up. So that's kind of my way to get back to that without actually having to go out into the woods. I can just write about it. <laughs> well, I love it, Gwen. It's just, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the book and, uh, and uh, I just wish it every success. So, Thank you. Yeah, and thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks so much for doing this. And God, in, in uh, better times, I hope to get back there in person again. It'd be lovely to see people again. Oh, well, you're, you are invited. You have a standing invitation. So. Thank you. Look forward to it. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Bye. This has been a production of This House of Books. If you'd like to be a part of the cooperative, please visit thishouseofbooks.com slash get involved.